Hi again, it's Lewis Wing, your continuous improvement coach from Flow Plus. This is a very short module and the learning outcomes are very simple. To better understand more about Lean, Six Sigma and continuous improvement and recognise their similarities and differences and how they relate to each other. The best way to visualise how Lean, continuous improvement and Six Sigma are related is viewing lean as the destination that you are aiming for. It's a state of perfect effectiveness and perfect efficiency that maximizes customer value, has zero waste, and involves everyone in the company in improvements. It is a destination that always changes and never stands still, and one that in practice is impossible to reach. But regardless, it should be the destination that we're aiming towards. If we forget everything we know about lean and improvement and take a moment to think what lean means if you ask someone on the street, people will think of an athlete with a lean physique. Someone that has a low body fat percentage is strong and optimised for their discipline, whether that's an Olympic runner, a kickboxer or a mountaineer. Lean is about removing fat and replacing it with muscle and endurance. And that is a good way of thinking of lean. A lean state is the destination we're trying to achieve and everyone's journey is unique based on where they currently are, on the scale and what their destination looks like. Continuous improvement is one effective approach and philosophy that can help you get there to this lean state. Often people prioritise big step change improvements so in this analogy, someone might go on a crash diet, hire a personal trainer and start training seven days a week. The downside of that is that these people will soon burn out and the improvements won't be sustained. Some of you may be members of a gym and noticed a large number of new joiners that join every year. People set unrealistic New Year's resolutions and prioritise this sprint-like approach. A study found that on average people throw in the towel and quit on what is known as quitter's day, the 17th of January. The continuous improvement approach shows that if you make sustained, small, incremental improvements and perhaps go to the gym three times per week, embedding the habit into your weekly routine, it's got much more chance of being sustained. Continuous improvement is a great low cost and relatively low effort way to achieve your goals and I'll give you some great examples of real companies that have used this approach in the coming modules. So how does Six Sigma fit into all this? Six Sigma is another approach and it prioritises reducing process variation and focusing on the quality of a process. I won't go into too much detail for now but Six Sigma is all about creating processes that are in control and provide the best customer experience, product or service as consistently as possible. In very simple terms, a normal manufacturing process may make errors or quality defects every one in perhaps 100 cycles. A Six Sigma process will make one error in every 300,000 cycles, which is the equivalent of 3.4 defects per million opportunities. A point that I want to note is that consultants love creating new models and repackaging old principles into new methodologies. But in reality, lean is where all the fundamentals come from. And in my opinion, if you develop a lean mindset, the rest is very easy and logical to pick up. I've come across many companies that are eager to try the latest improvement methodology, like Six Sigma, when in reality, they're best just starting with the basics and identifying and removing waste through the involvement of people. Finally, there is Lean Six Sigma. This is the combination of Lean, i.e. identifying and eliminating waste, and Six Sigma, reducing errors and improving process capability. With Lean Six Sigma, there is a belt system to show that what level you have been trained to and what you're competent at. White belt means you have had a very brief introduction to Lean Six Sigma. 
Yellow means you are capable to make small improvements, normally as an individual. Green belt means you can work with an interdisciplinary team to make significant improvements. Then finally, black belt and master black belt, which essentially means you're an expert in Lean Six Sigma. I personally am a master black belt, but honestly, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this belt system and get caught up in it all. The quality of the training really depends on the provider, and I know there are some Lean Six Sigma black belt courses online that you could complete in one day and become certified. Also, as a side note, I find this rather hierarchical belt system sometimes creates a barrier for improvement, as people see master black belts as experts and think, well, they must know more than me, and they are responsible for improvements within the business. When in reality, continuous improvement teaches us that we need to try and invert the organisational triangle, and we want everyone to improve everywhere, every day. So personally, I try and refrain from using the Japanese words and giving myself a title that may create a barrier whenever I can. So to summarise, Lean can be seen as a destination of 100% value add and 0% waste within your operations, operating perfectly effectively and perfectly efficiently. This is the aim of every organisation and the destination we're trying to get to. To get there, you can apply multiple different strategies. Continuous improvement prioritises consistent, low-cost, small improvements. Six Sigma prioritises process quality and reducing process variation. And finally, Lean Six Sigma combines Lean and Six Sigma principles and uses a belt system to demonstrate expertise level.